Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant, John, Kerry, and Alyssa Altabelli, Sarah and Peyton Chester, Christina Mauser, and Ara Zobayan are the nine that passed away on Sunday after a helicopter crash in California. Welcome to On and Off the Field, which has taken very long for me to get started because I knew that's how I wanted to start, by saying the names of the nine that all passed away, and I I, I almost couldn't get the names out of my mouth. It is, it is a somber week, and that's what we're going to be starting with, is uh, remembering the nine and definitely remembering the basketball legend and just legend in general that was Kobe Bryant and uh, let's get started I'm your host Dylan Brand with On and Off the Field Thank you for taking time out of your day, whatever day it might be, to uh, listen on and off the field. Uh, We're going to have a great episode. Uh, We're going to be talking a lot about and remembering Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the other seven that perished in a helicopter crash just even 48 hours after I'm recording this on uh, January 28th. And it's still just, it's it's just gut-wrenching. And it's it's hard to talk about. I have listened to numerous amounts of sports talk shows to try and, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but kind of desensitize myself and kind of just hear people tell the stories and try and get past the emotional side of this so I could get to the point where I could record. And it's worked a little bit. Sunday and Monday I could barely even talk or hear anything without tearing up, but today doing a little bit better, and then I watched the last, I think it was three minutes of Kobe in his final game, and that just kind of like reset me. So I probably shouldn't have watched it before recording this, that was a mistake, but we're still going to power through, so thank you for joining On and Off the Field. You can follow On and Off the Field for all of your hot NFL memes in the news on a daily basis on Facebook and Instagram. You can also contact me at ootfpodcast at gmail.com. You can also leave voice messages on my Anchor profile. Just go to anchor.fm or use the Anchor app and look up on and off the field. Also, on the Anchor app, you can listen to the podcast, which you could probably guess. You can also listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, Google, and also now the rebranded RTF Sports Network on Spreaker. I normally air on Thursdays at 5. That's the normal time. I think I'm also slotted for Wednesday at 1 a.m. If you're one of those night owls, if maybe you work the overnight shift at work, there you go. Wednesday, 1 a.m. And I'm not sure about other time slots. I'd have to get back to you on that. But hey, the main one, driving home on Thursday, 5 p.m., go into the RTF Sports Network on the Spreaker app. It's like Speaker, but with an R, Spreaker, for uh, the people that aren't familiar with the app, because I wasn't. I didn't know it was an app. So there's that. I'm still working on the website. It is much better than it was before. It's it's getting there. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm not going to let you know about it until I have all the content I want on it. I'm not going to do like an early release. So just going to let you know it's a thing. That's in progress. Maybe by next week, we'll be good to go. We'll see what happens. Lastly, I want to get out of the way is the giveaway. We're just under 50 more listens. If we get 50 more plays, we'll hit 500 and we'll do the giveaway, which is if you're following on Facebook and Instagram, you'll see the rules. Once posted, it's not posted yet. I'll post it when we hit 500. You'll see the rules you need to follow. And once you complete the rules, You will then understand, you know, what to do to enter yourself for the giveaway. If you are chosen after randomly selecting one of the people that follow those rules, 
you will give me your favorite charity or foundation, and I will donate $50 of my hard-earned money to that charity or foundation of your choice. And then you can come on and talk about the charity, and or I'll just do research and talk about it myself. However you want to do it. Depends on who wins. You know, it, 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 if you want to be on, we'll do it. If not, I will let everybody know about your favorite charity or foundation, and they'll be $50 richer thanks to you for listening to this podcast. That is what's important. So let's dive into uh, some real, actual stuff to talk about on the podcast. So as I just said, you know, a couple minutes ago, I've been listening to just every possible sports radio station via ESPN or, you know, my favorite I said before is Dan Patrick show. I listen to Pat McAfee. I've just been watching everything to try and get some of the best Kobe Bryant stories that no one's really ever talked about because, you know, they're personal stories and people had them for themselves and friends and family to talk about, but never any reason to talk about it in, on, in the public. And, uh, I, I, it's just been great to hear all these people come out and say all these amazing experiences they've had with Kobe Bryant since he was 15 years old. And that was one that I wrote down specifically that I really enjoyed listening to just because he's been around for so long and this is how long he's been great was, uh, back when he was 15 years old. I don't remember who was talking. I I was driving into work when I heard this story, caught it like just after they said the guy's name, whoever they were talking to. And it was, it was another basketball player was in the NBA and he was talking about how in Philadelphia, a bunch of players in the NBA would go to a camp and there'd be college players there. And then maybe a couple, couple high schoolers just kind of to mess around and be there and learn and play some basketball around people, get some advice. So he shows up to this camp and he's watching people play basketball and he notices this one kid. He's just, he's a small kid. His body, he, had a, he said he had a long body, but he's just looked young and he's lighting people up. He moves in the paint, shooting everything. And he's like, man, that kid, that kid's really good. He looks so young. And he turns to whoever he was with and said, Wait, what school does he go to? He's like, oh, he's 15. He's in high school. He's like, oh. And so he just knew right, he said right then and there, he knew that kid was going to be great. Went over and talked to him and learned who he was and everything and just... From 15, and then when he entered the NBA for and played for 20 years, Kobe Bryant was the greatest basketball player ever. And, that, and, and it was just an amazing career. You can get into the accolades, I think, five-time MVP, two-time champ, all kinds of... He's in first place with all kinds of stats. It's his basketball career is well known and his basketball career is a reason why he's known around the world after Kobe Bryant passed everyone from every sport and every country was was giving out some kind of shout out he was a huge AC Milan fan and I believe that's a soccer program and the 24th minute into the game a bunch of fans held up a, a sign that said Something along the Kobe and Gianna forever together. Just, it's just amazing. And, and during the Pro Bowl, same day this, this happens. In the Pro Bowl, they're doing Kobe Bryant, like, uh, fadeaway shots after for celebrating. Uh, they're leading prayer in the locker rooms. Uh, and a sl- just in the actual game of basketball, countless teams, countless teams were giving respect by doing 24 second and eight second violations with the shot clock. I'm not sure of how the eight second happens. I'm not that familiar with the rules, but I do know they were giving 24 and eight second violations in honor of Kobe Bryant because those were his two numbers while he was playing. Trey Young comes out and, uh, 
he's wearing the number eight. He's normally the number 11, I think, but just he was came out wearing number eight in honor of Kobe Bryant. It's the just the number of things that everyone did around the league to honor him. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks retired the number 24. It, the Maverick Kobe never played for the Mavericks, but it didn't matter. He had so much respect that teams that he never played for are retiring his number. And just breaking today, uh, players around the league are changing their numbers from 8 and 24 to just something else. One of the first ones I saw was a guy who plays for the Brooklyn Nets, Spencer Dinwiddie, I think. He changed from number 8 to 26. No one's ever done this in a sport before. No one's ever... No one has gone the lengths of what people are doing to respect Kobe Bryant's memory at this point. Changing numbers, retiring numbers, giving shout-outs from soccer leagues. I think it was Neymar. He scored a goal on a penalty kick. He throws up a 2-4 in the camera. Devonte Adams threw up a two four in the camera after during the Pro Bowl. There's there's no limit to the respect that this man had earned in his life, and he did retire. He retired from the NBA and entered the second chapter of his life of being a father to four daughters and a husband to his wife, and he was he was slaying that portion of his life he was coaching up Gianna and he was leading that team that she was on and other girls that were her age and trying to bring in a new wave of stars Gianna was going to be the next greatest star of the WNBA the videos that they've shown on social media of her going up against Kobe and granted he's you know he's helping her practice but she's he's doing she's doing the shoulder shoves to go for the fadeaways um just just his signature signature shots and she's she's draining them at age 13 hitting WNBA height baskets that she was going to be great and now with all of this all the respect being pra- endless tweets endless shout outs one example i have was Tyron Matthew he said Kobe, you sparked the mind of every competitor. You made us all dig a little deeper. That is the Mamba mentality. And it reached every sport, even outside of sports. Some of the radio show people that were talking, Greenberg and Golick, Dan Patrick, people are saying, you know, they, they hooked themselves onto the Mamba mentality to dig deeper in their profession to be all they can be. Pat McAfee said he woke up the day after just, he woke up early and just wanted to be better that day. He wanted to, to do more with his day than he's ever wanted to before. And I I know this all comes after he has passed away and it's, and it's just such, so tragic, but this is the way that this is what he meant to people. And now people getting to reflect on their lives with that mentality and to realize that life can be so short you do not know when your day will come it could be so random and we learned that on Sunday with Kobe and Gianna and the seven others and the I I can't believe everything it's been 48 hours and things just keep coming in with everyone showing respect in different ways. I it's absolutely stunning and beautiful and just shows how much of an amazing person he was. Gonna have to take a quick break here. Be right back with on and off the field. Welcome back to On and Off the Field with your host, Dylan Moran, as we remember Kobe. Um, I'm, I'm just going to keep going with it. I, there's, there's there's more to say. 
um, a man that we hit him with his with his sports and how he impacted everyone in sports, but Kobe Bryant transcended sports and he just he touched everybody. You didn't have to play professional basketball to know who Kobe Bryant was. As as everyone knows, you did it in high school, you did it you did it all through if you're the same age as I was at least, you no know, twenty five, around that range. You watch Kobe Bryant and you you know, you did the little fade away with a balled up piece of paper and shot it at the trash can while going Kobe That's it's just what you did. Everyone did it. You know you did it. And don't let the flame die out. It's it should be I saw a video today of people setting up Kobe shot rallies putting a trash can in the middle of a cafeteria and a hundred kids are shooting shooting paper balls at it. Just this it's just what he did. And I personally never grew up watching the NBA. But I know who Kobe Bryant was. I know I have a lot of friends that can relate to that. I did not watch basketball, but you know who Kobe was. Even just with the paper ball shot, you're like, what's that mean? Oh, it's a, he's a great basketball player. He, so we all just do the, the shot that he does, and we sink it into the trash can. It's You didn't need to watch him, but as I got a little bit older and I started you know, watching a little bit more basketball and I started seeing highlights of Kobe, um, he, there's just there's four moments in his career apologize for the paper. You probably heard the paper flip there. Um, something about him. Four moments that I will never forget personally. Even with my lackluster knowledge of the NBA, you will never forget that Kobe Bryant dropped 81 points. He dropped 81 points. That's the second most points in NBA history behind Wilt Chamberlain's 100, I believe. I, th- I think it was an even hundred. I know it was Wilt Chamberlain, though. So I, d- I know a little bit about basketball. I'm not completely useless when it comes to this topic. But he dropped a hundred. But Kobe Bryant drops eighty-one points. He also dropped sixty in his last game. I think I mentioned it earlier. I watched the last three minutes of that game. He scored the Lakers' last sixteen points in like less than three minutes of game time. Just went absolutely he's driving to the basket he's absolutely gassed he's 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 just trying to get air in his lungs drives to the basket again and then he steps back for a three and then steps back at the corner of the key another he drops another two drops another two goes to the free throw line to drop two buckets on for an even 60 how how do you end your career 20 year career with 60 points i it's that's easily tops, if not the top way to go out. You get you get guys who come out of the league, they do their farewell tour, and they'll drop 23, 25 in their last game. Like, good way to go out. Maybe they'll hit a game winner, cool beans, you know, football. Maybe you can win the Super Bowl on your way out or at least make the playoffs, something cool. Kobe Bryant dropped 60. Just unbelievable. Um Another moment, he tore his Achilles in one game. And, you know, Richard Sherman can relate because Richard Sherman said when he tore his Achilles, all he could think about was Kobe. And Richard Sherman got got to his feet and he walked off that field, which I don't know how it's possible. Because if you tear your Achilles, that's your, that's like your foot. Like you, you, you shouldn't be able to control your foot at that point. It's just dangling there without that Achilles tendon there. If it, it just snaps is usually the injury, and that's what happened to Richard Sherman. That's what happened to Kobe Bryant. And Kobe tore his Achilles. I believe he went to the sideline or the locker room, and he still had to shoot free throws. He comes walking out onto the court and shoots two free throws and then walks back off the court to the locker room. He tore his Achilles. I mean, for me, if I get a splinter, man, I'm in massive pain and I'm 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 clocked out until that thing comes out. I mean, I can't do nothing. 
he tore his Achilles. I, I just can't. It's Mamba mentality. Tear my Achilles. Well, I gotta go score score two more points for my team. Get out of my way. And he went and did it. And uh, the the last one, which I think a lot of people are familiar with, is <laughs> what was his name? Uh, the other player was Barnes. And Kobe, he's about to. In, this guy named Barnes is going to inbound the ball from the from out of bounds, inbound the basketball. And Kobe Bryant's defending him. He's basically standing right in front of him. He's just kind of like moving back and forth. Barnes, see, there's this. You remember, like you used to like fake punch somebody, and then if they flinch, you're like, ah, two for flinching, and you punch him. Like that's not fair because the body's natural reaction to something getting that close to your face is to flinch and guard yourself. It's a it's a it's called protecting yourself. It's a bodily function. It's a self defense mechanism. Oh my god, I'm about to get hit in the face. Let me put my arms up to protect it. That's just that's how it, that's how your body's made to work as a normal person. Barnes puts the ball like quick motion whoo, puts it right up to Kobe's face to like, you know, pretty much get him to flinch. He didn't move a muscle. He didn't blink. He didn't move forward, backwards, or sideways. He just kept staring down Barnes and just, what are you going to do about it? He's like, why Why'd you even, he's just staring at him. If I threw a basketball at your face, his hands are still on the ball. He just threw it up in his face, and he didn't move a muscle. That is stone cold right there. Absolutely Amazing, and if that's not the definition of Mamba mentality, I don't know what is. Top four moments for me, just not being. I'm sure he has a lot of great moments in the NBA, but for me, top four right there. So before we move on to official NFL business, you know it's an NFL podcast, but Kobe deserves the full hour, in my opinion. But I got a. I got I got things to say about the NFL still. First off, it's been announced. You probably have already heard this. Has been announced Kobe Bryant will be inducted into the 2020 Hall of Fame. Which is he, he was going to get in no matter what, and this is basically a posthumous uh award at this point. But just this is the other half that I understand people are saying about how this whole, th- all of this is just unfair. And life is unpredictable and anything can happen and it's not it's not fair for us to say that this happening is unfair to us. It's unfair to Vanessa and his other three daughters and there are families, other families that are much closer to these people than we are, that are grieving very, very hard times for them right now. And it's it, people, I, I was hearing it all day today, how it's not fair and how we were robbed of not being able to hear more speeches from Kobe and to see Gianna grow up into the best WNBA player ever. You know, that's not our place to say any of that. All right. Life's unpredictable. It's not our call. And what's not fair is that husbands, wives, and children are gone now from from this earth, and families are left short. That is what is not fair. But Kobe will not be able to have a Hall of Fame speech now. And all I can picture in my mind is Kobe going up and talking about his Mamba mentality and how hard he worked to get to where he was and to tell his stories and to hear him talk about working with Shaq and all that. All of his, uh, I know Shaq was with him. I'm not sure who else famous was his teammates, I'm sure. But the Lakers were very popular back then and just dishing out losses to other teams and racking up the wins. That's who they were. But I, people wanted to hear his story. And we all wanted to see him grow up with his family and to watch amazing things happen and come out of that family. But it's it's not fair but it, the only thing that we need to do right now as citizens of this world that knew Kobe and were impacted physically, emotionally, mentally, anything by him is to just support 
Vanessa, his three daughters, and the other families impacted by these losses. That is the job. Thoughts and prayers with all of them. Non-stop, 24-7. We all have their backs, no matter what. If you know them personally, God bless you for being by their side. I'm sure you are, because this is not easy to deal with. One more quick hit before I get into the last um, part about this. If you have negative feelings about people praising Kobe and all of the things that are being said about everything that's happened and all the reminiscing and Kobe Bryant's and going back to his basketball history, if you have negative things to say, shut your mouth. Just take your hands off the keyboard and shut your stupid mouth. You're, you're stupid. You're an idiot. You're ignorant. Stop it. People are grieving all over the place. This is a tough loss for families, for friends, for people that watch the NBA, and for people that didn't even watch the NBA but knew his greatness and the things that he did for people. And it, you're in the minority, you know? Just shut up. Let it be. Get away from a com- If you can't help yourself, turn off your phone, get away from a computer, and go do something else. Shut your stupid mouths. All right? All right, one last thing I got to talk about. This isn't going to be my off-the-field segment, but it's off the court now for Kobe Bryant. We have the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation. You can f- read everything about this at kvbff.org. kvbff.org for the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation, and their mission statement right up front, the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation is dedicated to improving the lives of youth and families in need, both domestically and globally. See, global is all over the place. He has done amazing things for people all over the world. By providing financial resources and developing unique programs, The foundation strives to strengthen communities through educational and cultural enrichment opportunities. They basically run this foundation for kids, whether that's a couple examples. They have a mobile health care, like it's a bus, and they provide health care opportunities for kids on the go. They do auctions for, you know, they used to do it for Kobe sneakers. They would auction them off and that money would go towards, you know, other foundations and other charities they would do would go towards funding uh, sports leagues for kids. This website is chock full of stuff like that. And and computers loading. And a little bit how it started. It started in 2007. And they, in an effort to provide young people with life-changing experiences, designed to broaden their global perspectives. Through this initiative, Kobe and Vanessa have sponsored inspirational enrichment experiences for minority college students and provided domestic and international youth scholarships for the Kobe Bryant Basketball Academy. Everything's on here. It's it's great stuff. And there's also, obviously, a How to Get Involved page. You can donate. You can donate by mail. They have an option to, um, you, know, you can donate via, you know, I'm sure they do PayPal and other things like that. There's other actions you can take, be a membership, follow them on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. It's just a great thing to read up on and another legacy that Kobe's going to leave behind because I'm sure he has helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people through his foundation and just a great person, a philanthropist, an amazing basketball player. You cannot say enough good things there's at some point we run out of words for what Kobe was and how he how he presented himself to the world so thank you Kobe for everything you did and you leave behind a beautiful family and for the other seven that passed away we'll, we pray for your families and our thoughts prayers are with them and so sorry for everybody's loss we're going to be right back after another short break on on and off the field all right 
Welcome back to On and Off the Field, and in this case, on the field and off the court, uh, as we just got done covering Kobe Bryant's uh, foundation, the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation, um, and we covered a little bit of, well, a lot of Kobe Bryant's legacy, talked about his daughter Gianna and uh, the other seven victims from the helicopter crash, and we will remember them all um, for forever. Um, the legacy will never be forgotten, and such a tragedy cannot be erased from history. So, in the second half of the show, we're going to dive into a lot of NFL stuff. In a half hour, we're going to do as best as we can. So, we're going to get started right away. Thanks for joining as we dive into the Carolina Panthers. And I re-listened to last week's episode, and I was on another sports podcast where we did talk about Luke Keekley's retirement. So then I thought I talked about it, and then I did my podcast last week, and I didn't talk about Luke Keekley's retirement. So I smacked myself in the face. I was like, "You better freaking talk about it this week, dummy!" But uh, yeah, uh, as I just said, Luke Keekley is retiring from the NFL. He is choosing health over football and you can't you know Luke Luke Keekley got paid a good amount of money he's going to be set for for the rest of his life I would be willing to bet if he's smart with it but he had so many concussions one concussion where as he's getting carted off the field he's crying uncontrollably I mean that's an image that's stuck in my head for a very long time as I just said it it popped in my head and his face is just not being able to stop crying to have that look on your face and just and just complete utter just not having control over your emotions it it was a scary sight and I'm sure that moment comes back to Luke all the time as well and you don't know what kind of things that are happening with his body right now maybe he has migraines all the time right now maybe he has memory loss, all these things. I'm sh- his body has told him to quit. And he listened to his body, and he quit. And I just got done watching the Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix. And all everything aside, I'm not going to get into the details of it. It was a great show, though. I would recommend anybody watch that if you are interested in the, the story of Aaron Hernandez. They did a great job with that documentary. But the last episode... And seeing his brain and the damage, either both football and his life just together, everything that happened to him, that's what his brain ended up looking like, and they compared it to a normal brain. Scary, scary stuff. And it's it's research that has been looked into for a very long time. And I believe his name it was Nick Borland. I know his last name is Borland. I think it was Nick Borland. I remember him. Great rookie season with the 49ers. And then just retires out of nowhere. And he was on the Aaron Hernandez series talking about how he was already experiencing concussion symptoms, memory loss, migraine, stuff like that. And he called it quits right away. People are choosing health over football because the research now shows that football can be terribly damaging to your health, your brain, your body overall. There's some, it doesn't, It's not always CTE. There's some former players, I believe they were they were talking about Jim Brown on Dan Patrick show, and every time you see him now, Granny's getting up there in age, but you know, pain all the time, constantly in a wheelchair, can't walk. It's just things football does to your body, and if you're if you love football enough to care about it over your health, and you're okay with, you know, injuries for the rest of your life after football, and maybe even early death. It, that's a sacrifice some people will take, but Luke said no, and he is retired. Hall of Famer, some it'll be a tough conversation. He was one of the best, if not the best, middle linebacker in football while he played. The only the only one up there in competition is Bobby Wagner. It's it's one A and one B, two best middle linebackers in football for sure. The way he was able to find the ball, there were stories of. Offensive linemen and or quarterbacks that would call a play, 
and they get to the line, and Luke Keekley would start would call out their play for him. They're doing this. B gap, B gap. Run to the outside, left side, left side. And they're what did he just? How does he know the play? We just got you just got lined up. And then okay, cool. We'll call an audible. You know, we back off the line. They they do their audible. He's like, oh, they're running right. They're running right. They're running right. What are? And, and he just baffled offenses. He was so good at his job. But I hope he enjoys retirement. And I I pray that his health isn't too bad and he lives a long and healthy life. But also with the Panthers, Joe Brady, the former passing coordinator for the LSU Tigers with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's entering the NFL draft. And Joe Brady headed over to the Carolina Panthers. Which begs the question, one, how much are they willing to get rid of and dump for the first overall pick? to switch with the Bengals in part two, are the Bengals going to take anything or are they dedicated to getting Joe Burrow? Because it it screams to me, new head coach, Matt rule for the Panthers, bring in Joe Brady, just start over, get rid of everything except Christian McCaffrey. That's the only asset you cannot get rid of trade it all. Go get the first overall pick. Go get Joe Burrow. And I think you got yourself good good starting point for a franchise for the next to get started in the next three, four years. That's my opinion. But I don't think the Bengals are that stupid to let even to, to let go of that first overall pick for anything. Granite, send Cam Newton over Cincinnati with a couple draft picks. Maybe that works for him. But I don't I don't think the Bengals would be even that stupid. But they are pretty stupid. And the other news of retirement, Eli Manning has retired. He announced that uh, last Friday. Overall record, 117. 117 wins, 117 losses. Perfect 500 record, which just sums up Eli Manning perfectly. But a two-time Super Bowl champion and Super Bowl MVP. And again, begs the question, is he a Hall of Famer? And it... It just it's gonna be something that's gonna be thought of for the next five years. And in my opinion, you know there's some people where yeah, they didn't have great careers. Maybe they had like very, very, very good careers, but not Hall of Fame careers. Five years passes, you look back, man, Eli Manning, he that's he he's the one who beat the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl. That Tyree helmet catch and the the catch on the sideline and Oh, man, he, he's obviously a Hall of Famer. Two-time Super Bowl MVP and Super Bowl champ. and he, Oh, he absolutely, he's a Hall of Famer. Five years goes by, you forget all the mediocre seasons he had. So, we'll see what happens in five years. I think, ooh, I've been teeter-tottering back and forth all the time, but I, I think he, he gets in just because he's a man at well, whether he deserves to get in or not, it's a different story. But I think he does get in. Two-time Super Bowl champion. It always helps with rings. Played for a long time. I think I think he gets in. I, I heard a conversation the other day about how the Hall of Fame has been watered down with okay talent. They're just very good talent and not Hall of Fame talent. It's a fair argument, but it's where we're at. And I think Eli Manning matches up to a lot of people that are in the Hall of Fame right now. I think his stats, his numbers, his two Super Bowls put him in there. So moving into a little bit of free agency. It's not free agency yet. We're not there yet. But Phillip Rivers and the Chargers have moved on from each other. Um, The state of California is no longer below sea level because Phillip Rivers moved himself and his family out of California. So it kind of the state kind of bumped up a little bit after all that weight left because he has 6,000 people in his family. And now Florida is in danger of being flooded because he moved, I think, near Tampa. So Phil Rivers, I don't think he's going to retire. A lot of people don't think he's going to retire. It's just a matter of what team. Through the grapevine, I'm hearing the Colts. The Colts have a great offensive line and a win-now team. They are ready, but they need a quarterback. Everyone thought Brissett might have been able to be that guy, how he performed early on. I don't 
Uh, apparently down the road that did not pan out. So Philip Rivers to the Colts maybe, but also to the Colts, maybe Tom Brady. Tom Brady moved away. He It seems like, according to the team, he cleaned out his locker and his his spot in Gillette like never before. And which, you know, sometimes doesn't mean much. Some people just overreact to things. But I, I always thought Tom Brady would still end up in New England for another year. But it's going to take a lot of rebuilding. And, you know, a lot of money is going to have to be dumped into weapons for Tom Brady for him to come back. But what really hurts them is the Patriots offensive line coach, Dante Skarnecki, Skarnecchia. Dante Scarnecchia retired again, um, and Tom Brady cannot be hit. He's an old man, and his O-line was okay last year, and then a very good offensive line coach retires. I don't know if he wants to play behind that offensive line. (laughs) A lot of things point to Tom Brady not going back to the Patriots. The only thing that keeps him there is Bill and Josh McDaniels. Outside of that, I don't know why he would stay. I don't I don't see it, but another landing spot possibility is the Colts and also retaking uh, his spot, Phillip Rivers, or just taking his spot with the Chargers. A lot of weapons over there. Good win now team, good defense. Why not? It's far away, but if he's going to do one more season to try and get a ring back with the Patriots... Go to the Chargers, the Colts. It, it's going to be an interesting uh, off season to see where these free agent uh, quarterbacks are heading. A couple of coaching changes. Jason Garrett is now the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants, so he still gets to see Jerry twice a year. Jay Gruden, the former Washington Redskins head coach, is now the offensive coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll see who the quarterback of the future is going to be down there. It's going to be a head coaching and offensive coordinator decision. Nick Foles got paid all that money. Is he going to play, or are they going to put the rookie sensation, the jockstrap king Gardner Minshew in there? That'll be an interesting decision. For uh, another New York Giants news is Freddie Kitchens. I believe this was finalized. Freddie Kitchens is now the uh, defensive back coach for the New York Giants. So just to see where he ended up, kind of for fun, you know. Not No one really cares. He can He can go away and everyone will be happy. But Andrew Barry for the Browns, the former vice president of player operations for the Eagles, is now the general manager for the Browns. Andrew Barry, at 32 years old, is now the youngest GM in NFL history. He has good credentials. He was with the Browns before he was with the Eagles, and now he's back. He's the GM, new head coach. Maybe they can get stuff done. I don't know. It's 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 another wait and see season for the Browns. You cannot put any money into them. You can put zero stock into the Cleveland Browns. You can't. People did it last year and look at where it got them and embarrassed them. They're Super Bowl favorites. They're going to be amazing. No, <laughs> no, you you can't do that with the Browns. But they they're starting to get a little bit of a change in there. New coach, new GM, kind of got a new team going. They're growing together. We'll see what happens. And fun news. Larry Fitzgerald is now a part owner of the Phoenix Suns. He is only the second active NFL player to do so, and the other one is Aaron Rodgers has part ownership with the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's kind of cool. Fitzy has got another season under his belt. He's going to rejoin the Cardinals for one more year. Hey, good for him. I love it. He's reaching out. Great guy. I want nothing but success and happiness for Larry Fitzgerald. Nothing but a great guy. One last thing in NFL news. Bill (laughs) O'Brien. Houston Texans fans are calling for the head of Bill O'Brien, but instead he gets promoted. Bill O'Brien is now the most powerful person in the Houston Texans organization. He is now the head coach and GM of the Houston Texans. Yes, I'll I'll wait for you to finish laughing before I keep going. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 
it, he has not won anything. He's not proved his worth there. He is wasting Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins primes. This team is just not good enough. His coaching is not good enough. They blew a 24 to nothing lead to the I know it's the Chiefs, but he blew a 24 nothing lead. It's embarrassing. Kyle Shanahan got his second chance, you know, offensive coordinator got kicked out of Atlanta there and went over to San Francisco, but after his blunder of up 28 to 3, I just don't don't get it in Houston. I don't understand what you're thinking behind this is. I I I heard this on my way home from the gym after work and I just I could not understand it. Could not understand it. Kareem Hunt was smoking and drinking and speeding in his car down the road, got pulled over by cops. And as I was thinking, you know, this guy's done in the NFL, you know, he's just nothing but a mess. They got to suspend him again, probably indefinitely. It's going to be another Josh Gordon. Yeah, the cops, cop lets him go on it off with a speeding ticket. Uh, I, mind blown. I'm a huge, huge supporter of our police force in this country. And I, I realize there's a couple bad eggs out there. But man, to let a guy that's blatantly smoking, has an open vodka bottle in his car, here's a speed, he just, he complains to the cop, oh man, my former team's in the Super Bowl, I'm super sad. Like, so he's, he's showing signs of depression, possible suicidal thoughts, he's smoking and drinking while driving and speeding. And you just, here's a speeding ticket, man. Feel better. See you later. What? What in the... Ooh. I was I was furious when I heard that news. And I, I, I debated someone on Instagram a little bit about it. But my opinion, my take, man, <laughs> that's just... You could have killed another family. You could have killed Kareem. You at least got to take him out of the car and take him in into the in your compound and hold them overnight bare minimum unbelievable unbelievable all righty folks normally i would do like game recaps of the former this is why i've taken so long with news and i wanted to give all the respect i possibly could to Kobe bryant and everyone else from the helicopter crash but i didn't have to do a game recap really so that saved me a lot of time because only thing that happened was the pro bowl was on and I watched, oof, I think I, I watched highlights, not even highlights, like like a couple things here and there. Um, but I turned it on for about five minutes and I got to see the Fletcher Cox fumble touchdown recovery thing. Got a fumble, scooped it up. Someone pitched it to him. He ran it 61 yards for the touchdown. There was two people right there that could have tackled him. One of them was like from behind, maybe an offensive lineman that like tapped him on the shoulder, but then seemed like he let up and couldn't keep up with Fletcher Cox, who's like 40 years old and 350 pounds. And then literally gets to the five yard line. And there's a player from the other team, like holding him as he goes into the end zone, like, like basically cheering him on to get in the end zone. The pro bowl is an absolute joke. It's it's disgusting how much of a joke this thing is. And during actual live play, you know, someone runs for eight yards. It could like, and they all you do is wrap them up. It's two hand touch. It's flag football. It's an absolute disgusting joke. Just don't do it. Just stop it. I'm going to start a petition to stop the Pro Bowl. You're embarrassing players. There's no way you have good viewership. There's I, I want to hear the numbers from the Pro Bowl. They could not have been good because it's just stupid to watch. The only thing I got to see that I actually was excited to see was the new onside kick rule where you get the ball at your own 25. Instead of an onside kick, you get the ball at your own 25 with a 4th and 15 situation. You get to pick up the 15 yards. If you do, you keep the ball. The NFC team did this once. Kirk Cousins ended up just heaving the ball down the field into double coverage, and it was intercepted. Ta-da! Cool rule, NFL. So I highly doubt this is going to stick. I like the concept. It just doesn't seem practical. But that's it. There was a skills challenge. Skills challenge is kind of fun, but 
at the end of the day, it's not really that important. What is important is da, 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 the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 54 in Miami. Yeah, baby. Super Bowl is like right now. It's here. It's coming. Full force madness. It's gonna it's gonna be so amazing. It's these two I could not hope for a better Super Bowl. The 49ers and the Chiefs. And I hate I'm a Seahawks fan. I hate the 49ers. Like those people disgust me. But this game is it's it's the perfect perfect matchup. But you could not want anything better. It's top defense with the 49ers going against the top offense. And we've seen defense win championships before and like blowouts, but this is different. This is Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs offense. The last time I remember hearing defense wins championships was the Seahawks beating the Broncos in the Super Bowl, which was like forty three to eight. I don't this is not gonna happen here. Because the 49ers defense is is stunning. Shut down corner in Richard Sherman. Amazing backfield. Three stellar linebackers with Quan, Fred, Dre. My gosh. I always do that with the third linebacker. I can never remember. Um, Dre Greenlaw nailed it. Um, offensive line on that side is also both sides of the ball. The 49ers dominate. They, they're going to dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Offensively, three-headed monster at running back. We'll see if Coleman is 100% healthy, but they say he's ready to go. Debo Samuel, Manuel Sanders, Jimmy Garoppolo, Kid George Kittle. Everything about the 49ers is amazing. But the Chiefs, the Chiefs have improved their defense so much this season. The Chiefs used to be a joke of a defense. It used to be that team where it was like, well, you can score 50, but like the Chiefs might put up like 51. It's but their pass rush is so much better after they got Frank Clark and their secondary improved dramatically with Tyron Matthew there. And the I I mean you can talk a little bit about their defense, but their their freaking offense is just mind blowing. And it's because of Andy Reid, Eric the Enemy, and Patrick Mahomes. And they built the perfect team. They built speedsters. I think it was Robert Sala said it almost looks like they got their roster from the Olympic relay team and threw them on a football field. Pretty true. That's like, yeah, you nailed it. And it's going to come down to, I think, as I just said, Robert Sala. It'll come down to Robert Sala. The offense is going to match the defense. The defense is going to match the offense. It's going to be a matter who gets out coached. Robert Sala is going to have to step up that defense. And when the second half comes rolling around, when Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid makes their makes their adjustments, Robert Sala is going to have to make an adjustment. And he needs to be ready to make that adjustment now. So when they go into the locker room at halftime, he's ready to implement it and the team is ready to go. That's where teams have had trouble. They don't make the proper adjustments to contain Patrick Mahomes after he gets hot. He can get hot for a quarter, but then you need to figure it out and shut it down. So, if the 49ers want to win, it has to come down to Robert Sala doing his job. That's my opinion. I, I think it'll be a high, pretty high-scoring game. It might hit the 40s, but I think it's in the 30s, like a 38-33 kind of game, something weird, and you know, a couple... A couple of uh, two-point conversion attempts might get thrown in there. Here's here's your perfect like brick wall meets like thing that can't go through brick wall. I don't know what the saying is. 49ers defense have allowed two completions of 30-plus air yards. Two. Patrick Mahomes this year, 20-plus air yards. 33 of 70 with 13 touchdowns. 30 air yards, 11 of 27 with 8 touchdowns, 40 plus air yards, 3 of 8, 3 touchdowns. Um, it's it's going to be the battle of the Titans without the Titans. Battle of Titans, of offense and defense. It's going to be a great game. I, I absolutely am stoked. I, 
I can't, <laughs> I can't be more excited. So I am still sticking with my prediction of the 49ers for this reason. Ahem. The Chargers have the fifth ranked pass defense and they run the same type of cover three scheme as the 49ers, only with less talent, which is true. Mahomes' first game against the Chargers, 182 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mahomes' second game against the Chargers, 174 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. The 49ers run the same type of team on the D on defense. It's literally the same, but one of those corners is Richard German. If the 49ers can rush four with Joey Bosa and everyone else on that defensive line and get to Mahomes, which they can with four, they can win this game. And that is why I'm picking the 49ers. I trust the defensive line to put pressure on Mahomes. I trust that trust that defense to cover up enough guys for long enough to get the pass rush there. I think they get enough turnovers to get it done. That is my opinion. I think on the offensive side of the ball, uh, the three-headed monster that is Mostert, Breida, and Coleman will go over 200 yards combined, maybe even 250, and they will run to victory. My opinion, I just, I cannot wait, cannot wait for this game. I, I I haven't been this excited for a Super Bowl in a while, I think. These are two teams coming together out of clash. And if the halftime show was better, I would call this one of the best, most exciting Super Bowl matchups leading up to it in like recent memory. That didn't include my own team. You know, matchup wise, this is just a matchup dream because you also have the Madden curse for the Chiefs up against the Drake curse for the 49ers. Which one is more powerful? The Madden curse literally sent AB to jail. So Madden curse, Drake curse, head-to-head, number one stat right there. What is going to happen? I don't know, but I cannot wait to talk about it next week with all of you on on and off the field. So make sure you watch the game. Be ready to talk about it. Because you can go to Facebook and Instagram and comment on my stuff or send me messages to give me your opinions. You can email me at ootfpodcast at gmail.com. You can leave me a voice message on my Anchor profile. You can listen to the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, and Google, and many more platforms, along with the RTF Sports Network on Spreaker. Make sure to follow. Make sure you know what's going on at all times. So if we hit 500, you are ready for that giveaway. Thank you all for tuning in. Rest in peace to Kobe and Gianna and the other sevens that passed away. And as our normal sign-off, all hail the Jock Strap King. <laughs>